This is the sound of the Killer Keller beatbox body part sample pack. Over 120 loops, samples, and one shots for your music production. Exclusively on Splice. The Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller official.com. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. He's alive and he's alive and kicking. Yeah. Vancouver's finest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller podcast. Subscribe and don't be sleeping on this. I repeat, do not sleep on my repeat. This here is DJ Flip Out. What's up? Virgin Radio, Vancouver superstar, club DJ. More importantly, he's over this side of town, Red Bull. Killing it. Yeah. Doing it. Red Bull Music 3 Style. Uh, it's the UK final. So we're out here seeing. I, I'd say I heard six of some of the best DJs in, in UK. There's some. Yeah. Heavy hitters in this thing tonight, but uh, that does not that doesn't surprise me. Not at all. I don't think there's enough contests going on for the amount of DJs that are coming out with all the new technology. Yeah, uh, so that's very true. Very true. You're finding that when you because obviously like you're traveling now, you're out there. Yeah, and you must be seeing like all sorts of like what like. Oh yeah, people. Um, well, in years past, people have brought complete their own complete unique setups, like crazy, like Denon, like old the older like Denon. Um, controllers yeah. some yeah. people have brought I, I don't know if anyone's brought a controller a few years ago i don't know people use cdjs which is awesome as well but mm -hmm. there's a lot of but now pioneer s9 uh, is basically kind of the kind of the standard kind of um over in germany there's still a lot of motherfuckers <laughs> rocking tractor tractor yeah wow shout out dj craze Shout out DJ Crazy all the time. Yeah. There's and gonna be a uh, lot of names shouting out on this particular Hey. <laughs> and oh and the new rain setup. A few people have done the new rain setup. Rain seventy two with the twelves. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. With the, the twelve inch controller. Oh well they all compact in. No. Huh? It's a turntable without a needle. It's just No way. Yeah. It's a, it's called the Rain Twelve. Wow. Yeah. So it has like no latency. It's like a record. You no know, you have no um no needle issues, anything like that. This is crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, you may go back a long, a long way. Long way. <laughs> shout out Sean Lala. Yeah, shout out Sean Lala inside. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to see Sean in South America soon. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Me and him got, me and him got history. He's a good guy. I've got yeah. a lot of time for Sean. I do, really do. Um, I'm glad I brought up his name and it wasn't, it wasn't like, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Life's that, too actually. short, man. Life is too for sure. short for anything like anything like oh, that. Sean's um, awesome. Matt the Alien. Shout out to Matt the Alien as well. Matt the Alien. Yeah, he's been a combination. Jay Swing, he's been another combination. That Jay Swing. Cross paths on many a time. Yeah, Jay know? Swing's out in Vancouver booking, uh, DJing as always, and um, booking festivals, mm. Safe and Sound Fest. He did all the artists booking for that. That was Anderson Pack. Headlining oh. Oh. two days, Anderson Pack, Vince Staples, and then like a bunch of uh, like eight other acts on each day. Damn, wow, yeah, I haven't seen Jay for a while. Jay Swing's another one of those kind of staple characters within the BC area mm -hmm. of, of Canada that, like yourself, you, you kind of you slam it. You, Headley as well, yeah, DJ Headspin, another, another character, West Coast guy, world champion, world champion, you know, just a casual world champion. We're, <laughs> we're only dealing in world champions here, ladies and gentlemen, strictly. <laughs> Gonna see Headspin soon on the tour as well, on the Red Bull Music Three Style Tour. <clears throat> um, he's gonna be out in not Asia, I think South America. He's gonna come out, right? South America, yeah. So, I'm on a in case you're wondering, I'm on a mm -hmm. 20 country tour for the Red Bull Music Three Style DJ world dj championships i'm the host he's the host which is so i'm just on yeah. stage introducing everyone i'm the host of the live stream the live stream is the more important thing i've done the the tour european tour the last two years mm. and i've kind of just kind of hosted on stage but this year I'm trying to step up the whole production mm. so they're like we we're gonna put a tv host on so that's me because i've been there for like eight years so yeah so a live stream is big. Yeah, I've I've seen a couple of your live streams as well through the Virgin. Oh yeah, those are know. just me cursing a lot. Yeah, yeah, swearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but this is this is up on air. <laughs> yeah, this is the beauty of it, though. Isn't it? <laughs> That's the I thing mean, people like the most. Yeah, yeah, just tune in just to see. <laughs> yeah. Tune in to see me drop some shit <laughs> mid mix live on the radio. Clunk. Like, like no, like not drop a song. <laughs> drop something onto the equipment <laughs> and everything go awry. I've been privy to this a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you find? I mean, it's a funny one with them technology being reigning supreme on like almost like taking control of 
these championships and, and DJs, they, they, they're, on one hand, it's like, it's impossible not to be a bad DJ, but on the flip side, it's like, the, the art, artistic creativity is constantly evolving as well. Yeah. And it's almost like having to fall in line with the technology. It's, uh, but DJing was, uh, was born out of, um, embracing technology. You Absolutely, know what I mean? Yeah. Like Grandmaster Flash literally built a headphone cue, like with soldering and shit. That's like, crazy. He, he was like, a he was, you can look it up. He was like, a like a techie nerd, like a heart, like used to take shit apart and put it together. So he like took the mixer apart and constructed a headphone cue or something like that. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, something like that. That's crazy. Him or another one of those guys, but I think it was Grandmaster Flash, and like you know, like taking turntables and and making them into an instrument in and the first default. place. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, you got to embrace the technology. Yeah. You know, that's what DJing started as. You know, taking like what you have and like making something more and cooler out of it. Yeah, and there's an argument that it, that, that the DJ culture. In, inevitably is anyway but you know should fall in line with the the technological movements that are happening within the music like the genres that are changing for sure things are moving things have because we're in them. charge we're yeah. still in charge of the music man mm-hmm. you like you may think that you're oh i'm a dj i got good taste in music i just plug in my ipod I'll, give me the aux cord i'll rock it go to a fucking <laughs> go, do that at a, in a huge <laughs> venue with a bunch of different people yeah, yeah. that you you're not <laughs> yeah. sure what they all like it's not your friend's fucking house yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i don't can i swear it's on not, this yeah, thing? Dude, oh, yeah dude it's not your mom's wedding do you yeah. know what i mean and that's a, actually you know what that's a hard gig <laughs> yeah yeah that's a dude, super dude, doing a wedding is actually hard that's yeah. a real test of a real dj you want to see if you can really pull something out yeah. uh but yeah man like you know serato came out thank god because then everything turned turned to M- mp3s mm. imagine if you know yeah. i mean the tech someone would have made something up that we could play mp3s on but uh serato and now there's um i talked about the rain 12 mm. without the needle but there's this technology that these people these people in france developed it's called phase right and it's uh it's a thing that's about as big as your USB key that yeah. you'll see, like a. But it's, you put it onto the record, you take the needle off the record, and it is, uh, a, I don't know what the technology is exactly. It's not Bluetooth, but it's uh, you can control the record without a needle, and uh, and you don't need a whole. You can put on an old turntable, on a regular turntable, put this thing onto the record. It sticks what? on there, and it controls Serato. You can pick the record up and wave it in the air, and it'll scratch in the air. It's, yeah, it's, that's insane. It's about it's about to come out. They did pre-orders like uh, earlier this year. People it's, just think inquisitive, like how the hell is this happening? Sort of. It's the technology from your phone, right? You know, like your phone can tell if it's upright or sideways. That's right. Yes. They put it in this <laughs> little thing. No way. Yeah. So these n- like nerds who are into DJing are like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me construct something to maybe we can not use a needle and during like fucking God bless you guys. Yeah, man. yeah, man. I mean, this is the thing. Like back in the day, they were, I think when we was kids, especially when I was a kid, you know, the whole tape to tape thing and just being like in, in, inquisitive and just wanting yeah. to try different shit. Yeah, and you were you were doing you were looping shit on the tape deck. You, you know what I mean? It, yeah. And then you figured out, and then they're like, oh, there's a machine that you can do that on. Yeah. So like, it's like technology driven or dri- or is it driving the technology like True. it's like djing is cool man we don't all have to play i play records i play seven inch records mm. 45s mm-hmm. but you know we don't all have to be like you know um what's it called uh purist purist yeah i mean you can be a purist and also be for the technology like look at dj jazzy jeff is a prime example uh, he's a- that guy's from almost the beginning mm. You know, he inspired me to, to, to be a DJ, to even like rap music. Mm. And he's pushing, uh, he, he just did his playlist retreat and they had Rain there with those, with the whole setup, you know? You know? Yeah, yeah. 808s turned into fucking samplers, turned into fucking, <laughs> now we're at MacBooks, now we're on a phone, you can make a beat on a phone. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing. Not, Not a damn thing nothing. wrong with that. I couldn't agree more. I can't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I DJ. Arguably, I don't think I would have DJed had it not been for the technology, because you know, I was never so bona fide on the. I used to 
join in and host and do you know yeah. some very similar things to 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 what you you become into doing and like you probably don't for longer me actually to be fair you you know you're bona fide DJ business but like I've seen it all you know what I mean and yeah, yeah. I could never do it I could never do it so to have the technology just allows the likes of me you could though now, yeah you. it's fine I mean there's no there's no stripes because you carried records like if you weren't around especially if you weren't even around yeah. if you're born in 1995 yeah. and you're you're 20 something now right mm -hmm. what is that 22 years old yeah i'm 22 23 yeah. oh, are you 23 yeah, yeah, yeah. happy birthday yeah thank you i mean you just turned 23 so <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you were yeah. born in 95 like why why would you even fucking Hello? own a record you don't know any it's fine yeah. if you want to you can go back mm -hmm. but, enough, it's, but no one would do they they um, yeah they do because you know huh? yeah you well, like people, do you well, like people, jazz music Absolutely. From like the 60s and shit? Uh, yeah, I know. It's only on vinyl, though, really, isn't it? If you really have. I mean, you can always have interests that, that predate your birth. Ageism is so dumb. Oh, I wasn't even born when that song came out. No, like, but what I, mean, I wasn't born when all the Beatles songs came out. I still like absolutely. all of them. What I mean, though, is. <laughs> what I mean, though, is like. Oh. <laughs> to, Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. And also, the swearing is cool. I, I had a little beatbox sound effects on you. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 you'll love it. Yeah. Okay, uh, motherfuckers, <laughs> beat this out. You <laughs> fucking bitch. Uh, I'm in the house. He's in. <laughs> what can you beep? Beep this on beat, motherfucker. Just sleep. Is that going to be cool? Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it's all concentrated. So. <laughs> um, what I mean is, like, if. For anyone that was born, I don't know, 2001, 2002, right. um, to get into music by default, they wouldn't, they would probably just go straight to the newest technology. They wouldn't reverse, yeah. they'd probably reverse engineer it to the point of like your, your listening taste. Right. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine they'd go back to the plates. Some, some do. Some do. do. Yeah. I know some younger, some youngerish people that are into it. You know, you got like yeah. young people that are into old cars and stuff like that. You That's know what true. I mean? And also like vinyl is kind of getting a resurgence, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, it's ex that. super expensive. Yeah. It's like more expensive than it was when it, when those records first came out. They've import, they, that was scary then. So it must yeah. be pretty expensive now. Well, like Tribe Called Quest album, you know, Low End Theory reissued is like $40, $45 Canadian, what? which is like 30 pounds. Yeah. Right. And back in the day it was like. Twenty dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is probably about yeah, 14, 15 yeah. pounds. Yeah, that's it's, yeah. It's got this kind of resurgence of just being kind of novelty, mm. which is fine. I yeah. mean, I think it's important to keep it alive. It's fine. It's a, it's a very it. cool uh, format. Like yeah. it's a very cool uh, not format. It's a very cool fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, I like the fact that it's got all sorts of. I always just love the detail, the information yeah. on the back. You don't even get that on Spotify, do you? Uh, they they just kind of upped it, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is what I wanted to say, add on to what you said about it, like someone born like 2002, whatever, mm -hmm. getting into DJing, is that now uh, some people don't even really, some kids are like, why do I have to buy the MP3? I can just stream it. And they're like, why can't I DJ off streaming the mm -hmm. song? Mm -hmm. Which I think some of, the com some of the companies are trying to figure out. So maybe you might be able to DJ from a cloud. Oh, that'd be sick. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But right now you have the USB key and you can put all your songs on there and you can play them off the MP3. But like, sometimes I'm even kind of guilty of it. I'll go on Spotify, look for a song where a song just comes out and I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, mm -hmm. go on Spotify, listen to it. Then I'll be at, then I'll be like at a gig the next couple of days and I'll be like, oh, fuck, I didn't even download it. <laughs> I was like, I've been listening to it all day, but I forgot to get the, the, yeah, yeah. the track so I can actually play it. These are like DJ things. I wonder how many DJs at the competitions will be doing that, that very thing. You know, when they're rocking up, they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. But there's, uh, the, there's also, you know, there's things you can rip Spotify songs from mm. and get like high quality yeah. things. There's like little hacks you can do. Yeah. I don't know. I think with the, that streaming idea, if that's if that pops off, I mean that's just going to change. I mean, in terms of key songs in key, it's being yeah. able to stream it, having your own like you say, having everything at your disposal. On right. There. But then, what if you don't have uh, like yeah, yeah, um, what's it called? Internet. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you still have to fit, like. It's funny that you know physically have an MP3. I mean, it's not even that physical, but yeah. you got to physically have your songs on a USB. Saw A Track making fun of DJs on Twitter.
Twitter. He's like, hey, guys, what do you guys got in your fucking backpack? You got like, just clowning dudes, DJs that still roll with a huge backpack mm. because most people now, they, they're working on, they, you know, they use a USB. You go to a gig literally with a USB. Mm-mm. Literally, literally with a USB. Literally. <laughs> hey. With, with a USB. <laughs> and, you know, that's it. Yeah. But I have a backpack because I still have a computer. I use Serato. I got records. Sometimes I got to carry a Serato box. I don't know. And also, you're on your travels, man. Yeah. This is the international man of mystery hey. bag. <laughs> I don't usually uh, mm. DJ without my computer, but when I do, <laughs> it's a USB. It's strictly for international business purposes. Anyway. Where did it all begin? When did it all start with you? I mean, I know a lot, but I don't know enough. And these guys certainly don't know anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's kick you it off. <laughs> uh, for DJing, well, yeah, Jazzy man. Jeff, man, just Tone Loke, Wild Thing, these songs like '87, '88, uh, Two Life Crew. Yeah, man, Two Life Crew, man. They've been too short. I think they're the most unsung heroes. Yeah, Two Life Crew for sure. Yeah, Too Short got his shine because he he had like Blow the Whistle yeah. and those songs like later on. Yeah, yeah, and but, he did the Khalees thing recently. Well, oh yeah, well yeah, Bossy. Yeah. Uh, but like Two Life Crew, man, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Mr. Mix, the, their DJ's fucking dope, yeah. and he they used to have DJ records on their, on their. Uh, I learned uh, on their albums. I learned so many breaks from Two Life Crew records than uh, the, as any other hip hop group from. The oh, I went back on a 80s. few of their tunes, and and they 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 were. They weren't as I don't know. It just felt like they'd ripped a, a lot of sample. It wasn't like just like one little piece, and co- they they ripped the thing and then just did it. Oh yeah. Like you you could go back and and check that sample out because you could hear it in its entirety oh, yeah. on their records. You know. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And rest in peace, uh, Fresh Kid Ice. Yeah, absolutely. Don. Yeah. Don. But uh. So they was yeah. they was some major influences. Kinda yeah, and like and just Jeff again like. I don't know. Mm. That's a very, very beginning. And rapping, actually, rap. I was rap. I rapped first. Oh, I break. I did some b boying. I didn't really know what it was, but then like, I started rapping because mm. uh, of Stetsa Sonic. I saw like mm. something on the news about their um, apartheid, anti-apartheid mm. record, mm-hmm. Africa. So I wrote a rap when I was like thirteen, and I performed it at a talent show, and I won. I did it a cappella. And I was just rapping and then Public Enemy as well. Yeah, uh-huh. Public Enemy, dude. Yeah. <sighs> Love, that was, they were, them, they were some of my first, man. Yeah. I got into rap, I got into rap because of Anthrax and Public Enemy collaboration. There you go. That was the thing. So it's Public Enemy. Yeah. And Fresh Prince, yeah. And Fresh Prince, yeah. 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 That's, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, uh, and dancing as well. Like, not even break dancing, but it was like, R&B dancing like Bobby Brown mm, mm. so new edition like all the new Jack Swing yeah, stuff the whole Jack Swing that thing, was yeah. all yeah. and also hip house and house go yeah, yeah. like just like any like pump up the jam Technotronic mm. I remember listening to that song and being like okay this is cool I was like but this whack this rap is whack mm, mm. like she's is she singing she's singing the same singer and now she's rapping where's the and, you know, I just I felt like it wasn't a full verse it's kind of funny. It was having so that wrong. Opinion. It was right, wasn't it? In a weird yeah. kind of way. Yeah, I, I had what I mean. all the techn. I I love snap. Mm, yeah, I love. I snap. used to make a, a forty five mix. I had like three snap twelve inches. I used to make a forty five minute mix of the power. Damn. And listen to it over and over again. My dad came in the room. He's like, "Change the fucking song <laughs> all day. The same song." You know you want to win. You know you want to win it when the parents come in on yeah. that tip. <laughs> anyway, that's my be- yeah. My beginnings are are dancing rapping and then DJing because I wanted to make the mixes for our dance routines. Mm. Ah, and then that's how the transition. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's it. And from then, and then radio, me and Jay swing doing rap radio and make, I make making beats, mm. just a bunch of rap stuff. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of hip hop, just trying to, yeah. trying to be a part of it and trying to like imitate mm. it and, and then learning so much about it. Yeah. Now I'm like in my fucking forties and I have all this, useless information in my <laughs> <fucking head. laughs> but look where it's got you it's good for rap yeah. trivia yeah. yeah you can't beat me totally totally and okay. i can name a snare <laughs> like i reckon I can you do... could name a killer killer snare if you heard a killer killer I get, snare, yeah yeah you'd know it yeah you'd know it. <laughs> 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 okay we're
in London town. London, make some noise! Live streaming worldwide. We got the six competing DJs on the stage right now representing the UK tonight, but only one will be the UK champion representing uh, in, at the World Finals in Taipei in January. Oh man, it's gonna be crazy. Uh, my name is Flip Out, by the way. So tonight is the UK Finals of the Red Bull Music Three Style, and the DJ. You want to know the DJs? Who's in it? Or yeah, if you know them, fine. Uh, I know some of them. Yeah, um, uh, Matt Man. <laughs> Matt Man is dope. Um, what's Liam's DJ name? Um, um, Revert. Revert. Yeah, Revert. Uh, Kishmeister. Okay. A guy named Kishmeister. Uh -huh. And um, I want to name them all because now I've started. Yeah, yeah, name trouble now. You know they said yeah. You know his uh, album credits. You know a couple of them slip. When you win your award, I'd like to thank everyone, but the person I should be thanking. <laughs> you know, you know they hate you forever too. So yeah, okay, sure you so it. Mighty Adam, Mike Claw, Matt Man, Revert, Kishmeister, and DJ Rasp. Damn. Yeah, and then the world champions, the late the um, the last world champion, this year's world champion, Damianito, from Italy. He'll 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 be performing, and then the first ever world champ. Um, Alex Notal, who was known as Carve back mm -hmm. then in 2010, he's performing, and the fifth world champion SK83 uh, okay. from Germany, he'll yeah. be also doing a set. Wow! And we were expecting like all different types of technology on stage. Yep. Yeah. Have you been to West Bank? No, no, no. This is new. I was telling St St Dom Stan Tamori's about it. He goes, I didn't know there was one there. It's like a lounge. No it's way. like it, when I walked into the venue, I was like, is this the backstage area? Literally. 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 It was a backstage area. And what's I, it called again? West, West Bank. The West Bank. West Bank. West Bank. <laughs> RP. 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 RP near, near QP. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a small venue. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be vibes. We call it vibes. Vibes. It's going to be nothing. Vibe, 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 vibe. Yeah. We're going to have a cartel of vibes. Yeah. And it's, um, is it on the hunt for the British champion? Yes. And, and then, then they go to the final? They go to the finals, which is going to be in Taipei, Taiwan, in January. Wow. So it's 20 countries, 20 national finals, uh -huh. and then three wild cards that are picked by the judges from three countries that didn't have their own nationals. Uh, do we know what those wild cards are? No, not yet. I don't even know. Mm. But one of the wild, the wild card from two years ago won the whole world, DJ Puffy from Barbados. All right. So he was the wild card, and now he's the world champion in Barbados. Huh? Is he from Barbados? He's from yeah. What? Is he living in Barbados? Yep. He must be like Barbados king right now. He came home, and I think the fucking mayor was waiting for him at the airport. Ooh. It was some crazy shit like that. That's bad. Yeah, no, he's a he's a big deal. Yeah, I bet. Really dope. Really dope person and super dope DJ. He killed it. That's sick. Like uh, someone from the islands is going to win at DJing. Mm -hmm. You know, it came from there. Mm -hmm. And he did it without a mic. You know what I mean? Like the three style, you don't use a mic. The DJs, they're not supposed to use a mic. Right. So he won with his energy and just with DJing. What I'm saying is when he usually performs, he's on the fucking <laughs> mic. Then it's like game over. So he's gonna. He's had to use this kind of uh, just for the contest. Yeah, yeah. Just the, other. Uh, apart from that, he can do whatever he wants. It's crazy. Yeah. Exciting. Very exciting. I love the fact that somebody from a, a small place can work their way into such a yeah a, you know prestigious win. Shout out to Rihanna. Yeah. She's from Barbados. Ah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. I thought for a minute she was from Toronto. I don't know why I thought that. Oh, no, no, I don't no. know why I thought that. Mm. Sean Paul's not from Toronto either. Did you ever think that? N no, but, but I would. But I remember hearing Sean Paul for the first time in Canada. On, on Baby Blue Sound yeah. Crew song. That's it. On yeah. the mixtape. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. I had that. <laughs> People thing. thought Sean Paul was from Toronto yeah, yeah, because yeah. of that. That's totally the truth. I used to play that thing all the time. I genuinely thought, show me the light. All that was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he's from Canada. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he spent. He got. He got a lot of uh, love from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in that that time. From, yeah, man. Again, it's like it breaks. The, you know, Canada's one of the first 
like countries to for people to jump on those waves of new acts you know yeah yeah, yeah that's true uk as well though the uk actually the uk does makes their own fucking <laughs> wave <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, there's always been a cool connection with Canada and, and the UK. Always, yeah. Yeah. Always. And because of the island influence, a lot of people from the Caribbean in, in Toronto and also up here. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's kind of dope. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? And Drake took full advantage of that. Yeah, I mean, Drake, he's like, he, the, his, I think in, he, I was talking about this the other day, his cosign outweighs everything nowadays it's like he's yeah. smashing it like i think what it is is like he, uh, perhaps his 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 marketing and pr people jump on a person that he wants to co-sign first installing them with the the, the whole kind of co-sign ethos and then he goes and does it yeah. and he kind of lets his marketing team get on with that so, yeah and then he can just sit back it's kind of interesting it's like a really interesting yes yeah, very very smart yeah and it works. Oh, it works good. Yeah. I'm a oh. fan of Drake. I'm a fan of Drake. Yeah, fan. me too. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a bit Marmite, but... No, no. No, it's not. And, it, you know, his whole team, this whole team that you're talking about, mm. is guys from Toronto. You know what I mean? Like... See? Guy, it's guys that I know... This guys that I know personally mm. from when they were doing parties. Now they're... Who is it? Running... Drake's company, you know what I mean? Like, it's good. It's crazy. It's good. Like his DJ, um, Future the Prince. Future took the label and ran it for me. Then, it, like, that's Future the Prince. Like he was, he, and one of my friends, uh, Respect, was Drake's DJ <laughs> back in the day. You know what I mean? Like Drake was doing stuff there, and he came up. He's not bougie. No, he came the real way. Yeah, mm. yeah. you can tell though. But what's really cool is that it. As far as he goes into the commercial world, he still talks with honor about his hip hop upbringing. I always yeah. just feel like the skill set is from that era, yeah. and it's he's just putting it across in a more palatable way. Yeah, he made a song called Weston Road Flows. That's like a yes. fucking road in Toronto. Like no one really knows that. No, he called his cool. album Views, Views from the Six. You know, it's dope. It's dope. Congrats. Yeah, man. Drake, whole team. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, widely. I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah. yeah. Ladies right. and gentlemen, yeah, yeah I think we, were, we are. All right, listen, I'm going to do some filming. I'm going to make sure you guys check out what's going to happen tonight. All Dope. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, good friend of mine, my dearest, my boy. Yeah. Flip out. You oh. know it. My doggy. Um, stay lucky, start trouble. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't be strangers, all right? Peace. Peace. Shout out Wax Nerds crew. Standard procedure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Killer Keller Podcast. Serves you right for getting involved. Subscribe and don't be strangers, all right? Yeah, we're live and direct here in central London. This is how we're doing it. we got my boy, my doggy, my man, DJ Revert, Bristol Massive. Bo, bo, bo. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just a casual win. A casual win at the Red Bull Freestyle mm -hmm. DJ battle. Um, second place. Second place, first contest. Congratulations. Thank first contest. My first ever... DJ contest. Never been in DMCs, never been in IDA, and obviously never been in Three Star either. This was my first ever competition. I got and footage. It came, it came second. I got footage. You got footage? They will be seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> because Sick. the fluidity and kind of relaxed, yet passionate performance, I was just like, man, this, this has got to be in a bag. Like, Thank you very much, dude. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like you've done it loads of times. I did it, dude. I was... This week, it's now Thursday, on Monday when I came, when I drove from Bristol to London, um, Monday was Monday was the first day in nearly a month where I went a whole day without practicing. Like on a chilled day, it would be two or three times a day. And then when I wanted to go beast mode, I would do it six, six to seven times a day. So wake up in the morning and maybe do it once or twice, wow. go to work, come back. And just, I wouldn't, I'm a skateboarder. I would sometimes, okay, I've got to be kind to myself, go out, have a skate. Yeah. But which is really important when you're creating and you're I focusing. always try to remember that, but then I'm just, I always feel bad going out for a skate. Oh, I could be practicing. Uh, nah, 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 mm. nah, nah, this is really important. So I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I've probably skated about three or four times for the space of about, equivalent of about two to three hours. 
in the last month and a half, which is really poor. I just devoted all of my time to the, uh, to this to this routine, to this f- fifteen minute mm-hmm. routine, and it all just and when they picked when I went to the competition, mm. um, we had no well, me and the the five other competitors had no idea what order we were going to be going on stage. Yeah, and uh, it was decided from picking a number out of a hat, and we all stood in a circle, and we, there was a pieces of scrunched up paper in the hat. Yeah. And uh, we just reached in and I just pulled this tiny bit of paper out and I went, oh, please don't be one. Please don't be one. Please don't be one. Oh, fuck. Uh, it was one? And it was number one. Yeah, yeah. I was gone first. But, Cold. But, but I, was, I was happy I went up first just because it meant that I could just... Ease up. Ease up, get it out of the way and just relax for the rest of the evening. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Like, backing up on the skateboard thing, did you ever like at any moment in time did you think yourself... Man, I, I maybe I should chill on skateboarding just for this week, just in case uh, any sort of like accidents happen. Dude, with my fingers, my wrists, my elbows. Oh, man, like honestly, did I play on your mind a bit, it, dude? It, it <laughs> constantly was being burnt into my mind. Like, okay, if you're gonna go out skating, don't push yourself because I've I've been in situations where I'll treat myself as like, right, I've worked on a really a really a, like intensive project, mm. um, d- DJing related. I'm gonna treat myself. <clears throat> I'm gonna treat myself. And I'm gonna go out for a skate. Mm, mm, mm. I went out for a skate once after completing a really heavy project, and I landed really badly on my wrist. And I had a gig in two days. I was like, my adult brain kicked in, and it just went, "Go home." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go home. You've got a gig in two days. Yeah. You don't want to bugger it any more than yeah, you already yeah. have, dude. You're you're. Yeah, I always thought it's because like Slash, for instance, in Guns N' Roses, he was a BMXer. Mm-hmm. And I always wondered. I was was like, he? Hardcore BMXer. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. You take his BMX everywhere with him on tour. Like, you see some of the footage. He's like on, on the, you know, because they had these crazy like 80s style, you know, like decked out stages with drops and, and he'd, in soundcheck, he would cycle around it. He'd go up what? into the. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm telling you, man. I don't see footage of that. So yeah, and I always thought to myself, how does he get away with that? Morally in his head, like the dilemma would be like, well, you've you've got millions of dollars riding on per, you know, per tour. Yeah. Like you, you must know when to put the bike Stop. down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then yeah, you must have had that, you know, had, in the same I did, way. I was having that the whole way on the run up to the competition. Yeah. I was thinking, I've got everyone was saying, you know, I had family and friends like coming up to me because they saw how hard how hard the work I was putting in I was it, you know like I've said to you it was like between three and seven yeah, madness, times a day yeah. like every day and I had family members coming up to me going you know be kind to yourself chill out son you know you know give yourself a break now and then yeah. and I was just like yeah okay I'll give myself a break but even if after going out for a hardcore skate I'd come back and practice yeah. like I'll be I will go out and I will sweat one out my heart would be nearly to fall out of my chest but sometimes you know like when you study for an exam or something there's this there's this interim where um you've almost like hit the hit the roof of like how much you can study that's the thing you know what and I, mean? I, I i reached that about a week and a half before the contest yeah. and I, but it was you know people could have argued that oh you know what's the point now it's just it was just second nature to me like everything i was doing it was just so it was the, the, the phrase that I coined was it was so drilled, far drilled into my head that it had just gone out the other end. Mm. Like that it was just, I didn't need to think. Everything was just like, bah, 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 bah. My, my brain. That's amazing. My brain just went to Mars and bah, I was just like, bah, 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 just just literally wasn't even thinking. It was just an intuitive, second nature. That's what, I guess that's what explains the fluidity of the show last night. Mm. Like when seeing you doing it, it was like, what? Like it, it didn't. Feel, it felt I mean, slow. It felt slow to me. But because, you, but you know what that is? That's because you did it in front of people. Like all of a sudden, yeah. it's like everything that you're doing is being ridiculed. Slow. Da- everything. It's just like everything. When you're practicing, everything's that, like it feels like it's at Mac Ten. Hmm. As soon as I was in front of a crowd, it was like my brain was like, right, do this next. Now remember to do that. This next. Don't forget to do that. Don't forget to twist that. Don't forget to select that. Yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. Timing, yeah, yeah. dude. It was tight. Ty- knowing what to do at particular stages in that routine to make it flow as well and and just yeah quick That's question it. how many how many uh, minutes do you have for 
Uh, 15 minutes. Right, so just to break it down, just for those of you that do not know what the freestyle, Red Bull Freestyle Sessions is, it's it's DJ orientated. Uh, hashtag is the playing with music, which essentially is what it is. Mm. Um, and that I want to elaborate a little bit more later, but yeah, so within those minutes, our kid and, and the, how many was like seven of you, wasn't there? No, no, there was, uh, it was me and five other guys. Five other guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's all about what you can do in manipulation with the two turntables and the new technology, which is absolutely fucking <laughs> crazy nowadays, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like way out there, like by a beyond, you know, it's not, it's not what you used to see in the Juice movie. It's not what you see, like, uh, you know, you don't see it anywhere. And like the way that it's been fucked with it's is crazy. It's extremely rare. What you saw last night, I'll say to you right now, is ex it's... It, it, I, I don't want to speak for the whole of the DJ scene, but it, it, particularly in the UK, it's really rare to see that level of DJing. Crazy. In, in any other given club scenario at all. Like most of the time, whenever you go to a club scenario, it's just a, a Pioneer DJM 900 and a pair of CDJs. Mm. And true, that's true. it. But the guys that were there last night, we were all rocking on Technics 1200s. That hasn't changed. We were given the option of using uh, Pioneer PLX 1000s, which are more or less the same as the Technics 1210, which is the same as the classic Technics right. turntable. But it gives you the option of having, on the pitch fader, instead of going minus eight and plus eight, mm. you can choose to go either minus 16 or plus 16 or minus 50. So you can dip it down even lower. So it goes... <laughs> Like oh really God. slow. So they're crazy. It's minus 50. So I've, the platter will spin, it will turn like that fast. It's so slow. Surely that must be like a whole <clears> other... <throat> it opens up so many opportunities for yeah, of course. sound manipulation with those turntables. But I, we didn't, we decided for the night, we decided not to use them because there was such a quick turnover and the venue were giving us a cough. Very mindful of that. Because yeah. it was in a fairly, the, the, despite the club, it was in a fairly residential area. So that was why we had to cut it, had to be cut off fairly yeah, early. Yeah, I guess Which was a bit annoying, but. Hey, it's all right. It's still a school night. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, there was certainly techers inside the place. Like, for, for me, it was like, who's the Italian guy? The guy was. Damianito. Damianito. Dam is sick. Oh my God. It was like, it was just like, I don't know what a lot of those buttons were doing. And that's that's bigger for me. Yeah. But the there's a fluidity to everything that's going on, and uh, to the point where it's almost it's almost nice to hear a fuck up <laughs> because then yeah. because then all of a sudden it's like it keeps it human human yeah like but I heard it was literally so fluid. There was a couple of moments where you could totally tell this is live. There was no point where you were like he's pressed play on anything. No, because no, no. everything's popping off like, and he breaks it down and builds it up and. Uh, he, but fluidity, man, was insane. Yeah, he's like you can. I can definitely see. Like I went, I got down to the to the venue, um, unpurposefully ahead of time. But uh, we were. I was driving from Tooting to the venue, which is in Lab, which was in Labrook Grove, mm -hmm. and it, we were expecting it to take us an hour to get there. It took us half an hour. Like, well, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, really quick. That's unheard of. Yeah, like yeah. for half, like half an hour, forty minutes. What time did you get there? Like, we left at half three. Like we got there at ten past four. You went on some. You went on some warp speed. How did you do that in a rush wait, hour? Wait, wait, like, d dude, I don't know. Literally, we did hit traffic as well. Not hardcore traffic, but mm. forty minutes tooting, tooting back pretty much yeah. straight to Labbrook Grove. For 40, 40 minutes. So you were there to see all that he was. Yeah, he was, he was just doing a sound check. He just had his headphones on, and. Um, when we we had a little jam um, before the before, uh, before the sound check, and I could definitely see why. I could one thing I was able to appreciate from him was I could I could see that he just he just practices and practices and practices. Mm. Like uh, that's something I really 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 appreciate mm. to see someone really put uh, the work into their craft. I mean, you would have to if you're given the he's the world champ. He's the the 2018 world champ. If you're gonna put in, if you've been given that that title, mm -hmm. there's um, <clears throat> there's kind of almost like an expectation of what you are expected to bring to the table, mm. in, a, in a sense, because you can't just sit on it. No, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, and what I was really appreciative of was when he did his route, when he did his showcase yeah. to us, he actually dropped some 
beats that he had been making as well. So he he had done all that. Uh, you, for those who who don't know, he'd done a lot of um, kind of bass driven hybrids of uh, uh, of like Eric B and Rakim. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of like the there was a kind of a um a remake of uh, of Champ by uh, oh god I can't remember the name it's a really classic it's a really classic hip hop track called, called Champ <laughs> 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 no it's a Champ oh, well, I mean, yeah, oh, the Mohawks the Mohawks, Mohawks, yeah, Mohawks say, Champ hey, listen we need to figure it out right now There's yeah, yeah. Just hip hop heads and they go like what yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it yeah yeah the Mohawks yeah right. the Mohawks Champ Champ <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like yeah, he'd done a bass remix of that with Rakim's. What? He had uh, he had Rakim's acapella. He, he was we were just packing down. He was like, yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got Rakim's acapella, and it was like, what? what the? So what I tell you, look, let's just get into that. I'm gonna I'm gonna play this. This is gonna be on like some VT shit. Oh, right sure, now. sure. <laughs> Shut up. 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 Every sound boy, shut up. Pack up your little dumb place and put them in a suitcase and and go away with them. Look, 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 rubbish. If you was to uh, summarise the latest, I don't know, mission brief to be a DJ in 2018, um, you know, I, I think from from the DMC era, it was very much about. Uh, Work within your means. Uh, two two turntables and a mixer. Mm. Um, what's the mission brief on on twenty eighteen? I think it depends on the angle of the, of the person, uh, what the person wants to achieve. Mm. If um, if you're just wanting to just get into it and see if you enjoy it, mm. with modern technology. I would see no problem in recommending someone to just start out on a con- controller. As much as I don't like them, I'll just put that out there. But it's a good starting point. Mm. You're learning to blend tracks together, uh, learning how to, you know, blend tracks, EQing, that whole thing. If you enjoy that, sorry, I'll say that again. If you enjoy that, then um, you can decide which medium you would like to advance to whether that be on cdjs or whether that be on turntables mm-hmm. me personally it's always been on turntables because i'm stubborn yeah. <laughs> i'm extremely stubborn right. um i prefer turntables because what i do as a dj comes from an analog art form yeah I so see. i would i've tried playing on cdjs before i have used cdjs in the past and they just it's just not the same thing. Mm. People have said that I understand. I, I would. I see the point in CD in CDJs from a blending and mixing perspective. Completely, it yeah. makes sense. Having uh, uh, your tracks on a, on a on a USB stick saves a whole load of space. It allows you to worry about less. You can just rock up, bang, start playing, and do your to, and do your whole thing. Yeah, I completely yeah. understand that. But for what I do, and uh, what I bring to the table, it it's a performance aesthetic. Mm. I have this compulsion to always want to bring performance to the forefront whenever I'm playing. Right. I never want to just stand back and go, here's track one, here's track two, here's track one. Yeah, you vibe with the crowd and that, yeah. I, dude, I want to, I love throwing curveballs at people. I love going, right. I like, I like some DJs, right? Some DJs want to have an energy to their set and it just does that all the way along. And then boom, at the end, it just dies. Me, I, I like my sets to go like Mm. that. I would like to have a bit of energy, calm everyone down, bring it back up again, party up around and then mellow everyone down. Because because you have to think, you have to think about from, unless everyone's like, you know, 
been taking drugs all night and they're totally up for it, then of course you can keep the energy level like that and make it severely hardcore. But I always try and put the audience first mm. and take into account of um, what it would be like from their perspective. Yeah. I'd want I'd want it to be in an experience rather yeah. than just them rocking up to a bar and just jamming out to music for the sake of it. I want to give people and experience is that a cold control thing is that is would you say that was part of the 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 dj's overall i would say it's a i wouldn't say it's a control thing well it depends i mean if you're saying it's a control thing then you you could say the same thing for a band oh you say say for everything yeah what i mean is like um when you're when you're throwing those level of curveballs um it's uh, yeah, she maybe some sort of control. What I mean is it? Is it I guess it's an installing a trust. There you go. Yeah, definitely. I think also I oh, I think I'm, this is deviating a tiny bit, but I love uh, playing mind games with with punters. I love it so much. Like I'll I'll <laughs> still get it. I'll still get people coming up to my my spots where I'm a resident at um, doing the whole request thing. Mm. Right. Like I think can I just put this out as a disclaimer? If you're going to see a DJ please stop putting your iPhone in, in their face. It's rude. It's the <laughs> rudest thing. Like, I swear, like, just... Hey, man. Just, hey, man, you got that? Hey, you got that? Uh, uh, <laughs> dude, dude. I, it's like, I'm staring at a mixer. It's pitch black darkness. And then just to have this Hello. light... And it blinds shot, you with the little pupils. Like, yeah. yeah, dude. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, yo, I can't <laughs> fucking. And they choose to type it out. Like, it doesn't matter what you type it on notepad or on a text. It's white background. Blasting just like, your eyelids. Yeah. Can't fucking read the thing. And like, I understand why they would do that because they don't want to yell. Mm. But I would. When you're in the middle of mixing and then someone distracts you and asks you to read something, it's like, like, I'd rather you just. Be patient. Yeah. Let me do my thing. I will come to you. I'm not trying to ignore you. I never, I never try. I never ignore a punter. If I, if it looks like I am, it's because I'm in the middle of transitioning or trying to make sure I have the next track queued up or sometimes two tracks in front queued. Or oh, it might be the fact you ain't got Killer Keller on side saying, what the, what do you need, man? <laughs> We got like, what you I'll, need. I'll just turn to you. There's been times when we've done shows together. I'm like, okay, oh, can you just sort this out? <laughs> <laughs> talk to her. Yeah. Oh, just talk to her. Yeah, please, please, dude. Just can you just can you just yeah can you just sort her out? For a talk minute? to them. Talk yeah. to her. Great, yeah. graciously accepted. <laughs> I'm a people's person, you see. Mm. Um, and or maybe they could just be wanted to speak to you, not me. Oh, hey, hey, you never know. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Sorry. I wouldn't rule that out. Oh, the guy uh, on the mic is so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted to like briefly, very briefly, talk mm. to you about autism because because you do you 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 are yeah autistic, um, right? yeah I was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome when I was eight right and it's something I'm very happily happy to talk publicly about because Absolutely. I don't feel that it will it's something that I don't feel will hold me back and it's, it's nothing lost nothing gained yeah. I used to be very kind of protective of it up to a point and now I, I feel like it is there's it is, there, yeah. there's nothing it's not a sympathy thing i'm not doing i'm not i'm not putting it out there just as a sympathy vote but i'm just putting it out there just because um there's i find a lot of people that are getting are beginning to get diagnosed with it as it becomes more familiar to the public mm, mm. and um the thing i tend to see is families or parents in particular being very, um, just basically being put into shock and just not knowing what to do, right? With, with, uh, with their child. Well, there like, is some se- severe degrees, isn't there? And then there's the yeah. kind of functioning. You yeah, know, like so you're all, like, way on the other side. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm completely on the side. I was diagnosed when I was diagnosed when I was eight. The doc, the the the, the, psycho- the psychologist said to my mum that I have what is dubbed as a high functioning form of Mm. Asperger syndrome. Mm. And the thing was when I was diagnosed when I was eight, um, my mum decided to not tell me until I was 14 that Mm. I had this condition. Um, And my mum, God bless her, she fought my fucking (coughs) corner, man. She really fought my fucking corner because the education board were 
just completely turning a blind eye to her. Oh, isn't that a surprise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were just like, don't be absurd. Don't be absurd, yeah. Mrs. Cooper. Your son is not, yeah. your son is not autistic. No, he is. He is. Like, I'm, I'm noticing these pants. Yeah. Don't be, please, Mrs. Cooper, you're being completely, mm -hmm. you're being over the top. And my mum had the opportunity to go, like it was a, I think it was something like a once in a lifetime opportunity to be diagnosed by this, I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember the doctor's name, but it was some very high end diagnosee. Whoa, um okay. uh or diagnosed sir, sorry. And um yeah, she came out and said, Yeah, he has Asperger syndrome. And it was like my mum's description that she gave me was it was like someone just gave her the golden ticket. Yeah. She's like came to the education. Was like, so long, yeah. she, it was literally like she got the golden ticket, came to the education, but went, see, I Yo, fucking told what you. Did they, say? they were like of course, well, after they got that, they were like, you know, had I was seeing a therapist. I was uh for me. I didn't, I just thought it was me leaving school early. It's like, eh, yes, it's like another leaving, day. You know? yeah, it's just like yeah. leaving school early and I get to go to see a therapist. And when I was going to see the therapist, it was just like, basically um, the therapist would just talk me through things like what, how my day has been, mm. what I've been up to. And I would do creative stuff when I was there. I would just like, I used to do really random creative stuff. Like I would put, um, I don't even remember where I got this from. I used to, get a, a Tupperware bowl and fill it with a mixture of air, a fairy fairy liquid and water and black paint and get a straw and blow into it. The bubbles would go up and then get paper, put it over the top and you have a print. Oh, like, a, like, like a bubble print. You crazy, that's yeah, wicked. It's the weirdest thing. I, I don't know where I got, I think I must have got it from like, um, uh, you need to copyright that right now because people are going to be like <laughs> hey you see that t-shirt design we were thinking about All right, well, I think we got there one. we go got a bubble print that's G but yeah I used to do shit like that and also I remember being a I was a really big fan of the never ending story when yeah. it came out when the film I was a big uh, fan of the never ending story um, and the film had a massive influence over me and I remember I used to like I my imagination was so wild I used to like for those of you that haven't seen the film, the antagonist of the actual film is a thing called the nothing. And it's just this, this kind of like, uh, personified storm that goes mm. through the book, through the never ending storybook. And is just like destroying everything in its path. Uh -huh. And it's basically just an, an enormous storm. And the fact you can't see it. And the fact that you can't more, see it. Yeah. But what I used to do with the Tupperware box, I used to, this is how weird my imagination was. I used to like drop bits of paint, into the actual black paint, like into the water. And it, the way that the ink like went through the yeah. water, it looked exactly like- The nothing. The nothing. And I used to like imagine that that was actually how they created the effect in the film. That's cute. But, but actually, yeah. you know what? Inadvertently, you've dis you discovered a whole new sort of- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Artistical creative. Exactly. So after I was, so when my mom <laughs> told me that I was autistic, um, it was just as, it was as if, she just like, she, it was just, oh, sorry. It was as if she just reached for a, for a light where it was like, I just, it, it was as if I'd been walking around a room that was completely dark mm. and she just reached for the light switch and flicked it on for me. Mm. And everything just suddenly made sense. Um, because going through secondary school was really difficult for me. Yeah, I bet, yeah. extremely difficult. I went, um, my mum, the school that I went to in primary school when I was diagnosed, the next they they had a a school where all a, a secondary school where all the students of that school that, of that primary school that I was at would mm. go to, mm. and my mum didn't want me to go there because they didn't support children with autism. Right. And mm. she went back to the education board and she said, "I I don't want my son to go here mm. because they don't they don't have any support for my child uh, for any children with autism." Mm. And they turned to my mum and they basically said, well, the only option that we've got for you is this all boy, all day boarding school for boys with dyslexia. It was just a, a boys, a boys school for boys with dyslexia. And she was like, well, my son is not dyslexic. He's autistic. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, that's your only option. You either give him to some beads where you won't have the support or you give him to this all day that's boarding school. Dumb. It's dude. It was ridiculous. My mum was. My mum really didn't want me to go there, but she had no choice. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I was. I went there, and I was. I was the school's first autistic student, 
wow. first ever aut autistic student. And when I was told that I was, and obviously just up till I, when I was four, from 11, I was there from when I was 11 till I was 15. And from the, f until I was 14, it was, I hated going there. It was, Mm. It was. I loved the the, the 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 teachers. I loved. I did have mates there, but really, you know, slim pickings of mates. Mm. And every day I went there was almost like I resented going there so much mm. because of the bullying. I really, really <laughs> resented it. Mm. And I was still having therapy. And when I, the, the turning point for me. Was, came from one of the therapists and granted one of these therapists was it, she had a very kind of I wouldn't say abrupt approach but she had a very kind of like don't do that stop doing that right this is the right way this is the wrong way type thing and she was asking she would ask me typical things like how my day is and I used to do one of the symptoms of, of like someone who's autistic or, or or has Asperger syndrome one of the traits is like not keeping oops, sorry one of the traits is like not keeping eye contact um a very typical trait like you'll you know talk yeah. like this yeah how's your day yeah it's okay um but my mindset is well if you can see me and we're having a conversation why do you need me to look at you you know that we're here i'm here Mm. I'm talking to you. Why do I need to look at you? Type wow. thing. That was my take because we're both talking. Mm. We're right next to each other. So why, what, yeah. what need? Why do we need to look at each other? This is how my brain worked. I was just like, why do I need to look at you? Yeah. And my therapist at the time, when I was about just before I turned 15, she was just like, Liam, I don't want you to talk to me unless you look at me. And that changed the whole thing. And that changed the whole thing because... I, I, Liam, don't talk to me unless you're looking at me. Yeah. And that was a turning point in my social interactions because I didn't want to be the black sheep mm. anymore. My mum, my mum had already switched the light on for me mm. by saying, "This is why you do certain things," mm. and I didn't. And because I went to an all boys school, oh, you get singled out really quickly. I wanted to quickly turn that around hard, yeah. i mean i'd only a year left at the school so you know whatever difference it made i probably nothing but post school mm. i wanted to make sure that i was trying to be more on top of my game in terms of social interaction but i tell you one thing um talking to girls was a really difficult thing mm. really because if you go to an all because like if when you're in when you're an early teenager and if you go to an all boys school yeah yeah it's when you come out of a all boys school and you're just thrown into that um into that arena of you know chatting to chicks mm. where to begin where the hell to begin yeah, yeah. it was it, it's and i you know i don't have that problem anymore hey bet you don't hey, hey. Hey, this is our kid. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah just coming out of coming up to it it was um yeah it was really yeah really fucking difficult until my pretty much my early 20s, mid to early to mid 20s. And, um, but now, I th but I, I'm not resentful of the condition at all. I'm happy that I've got this thing because it's, it's enabled me to kind of champion things that I'm extremely passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's the one th trait uh, of uh, people, children, man or woman with this condition is that they are, uh, once they find something that they are extremely interested in, they don't piss about. Yeah, they I really don't. I noticed, they've, mate. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, they really don't. And I've noticed that. <laughs> I've met a couple of people who are autistic in the past, and I just I look at what they're capable of achieving or have achieved. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's really mind blowing yeah. when you just leave someone with this condition to do something that they. Where th this is basically it. Where they fall flat on talking, they make up for. They in, make up yeah. for in a visual perspective. That's really cool. Very strong, like that. and that's why. Yeah. And that's why DJing um, appeals to me mm. because you're using not only a visual motive but a sound motive. Mm. It doesn't require you to talk. Yeah, focus on that one. It thing. allows me to focus on something that that where yeah. I can drive an emotion. 
from someone through music and a music music's always been a part of my of my life since I was a child like mm. my mum and I'm not going to say that whole bait thing of like oh you you're a hip hop DJ you must have grown up with funk and soul and yada, yeah. yada, yada. yes there was funk and soul being played at my house but my mum used to generally play a lot of Joni Mitchell Peter Gabriel, nice. Robert Palmer, nice dude. So album baby, dude. That lit. so album was the one, dude. For me, <laughs> for me, like the tracks of my childhood were Peter Gabriel, Sledgehammer, nice, and yeah. Robert uh, Robert Palmer, Addicted to Love. There you go. Like those, they're like they're pop tracks. Yeah, they're the late eighties meter, mate. Like. Exactly. And then the album, my album of choice from my childhood when I was, I remember listening to this album when I was five, was Michael Jackson's Dangerous album. That album to this day kicks. Mm. It's such a sick album. It's like that. It was that transition of when MJ was going from the pop aesthetic into the kind of like new jack swing, mm, like like yeah. hip hop kind of. Feel. Have you checked out that Quincy Jones doc yet, dude? I want to watch it so you bad. Are gonna, I swear to God, right? Just have your turntables ready for when you've watched it. <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> like yeah, I'm excited for people that haven't seen it yet. The Quincy Jones documentary is incredible. Incredible. Yeah, you're gonna love it because they talk all about that. They talk sick. It's deep. It's di it's so deep. It's good. You're gonna love it. Oh man, like if, if anything, I like looking for sample material, mm. and I'm like just Quincy Jones in, in his in its. Oh, you got samples for days in that yeah, doc, dude. Dude. Well, even vocal samples. Yeah, yeah, like all of that. Um, well, look, if you're if that condition engages you to create and be the best you can be and give yourself a, a, a motivation and a reason why like behind the fact that you want the prestige of the success of winning but mm. you've come with a mission brief at least that that in itself is a is a reason for yeah you. exactly well dude look i'd i could talk all day yeah but uh you know, we've got, this is like a three-part podcast, by the way. So yeah. I don't want to cover too much ground that the other guys might be talking about. So, um, But what you've brought to this particular podcast is invaluable, particularly um, the pursuit of the reasons why you're doing this mm. and the technological side of things that you've learned and brought into the fold. So I really appreciate you coming through, G. Dude, thanks a lot. Good things. Yes, man. Good things. My boy, DJ Revert. <laughs> Get to introduce yourself and your town. Let's go. Yeah, man. Mighty Atom representing for London. Make some noise, people. Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> um, <coughs> it is the Killer Keller podcast. We're live and direct. Um, this is the third of a trilogy. It's a bit like Star Wars, but, but with less special effects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't be strangers. Do not sleep. I repeat, do not sleep on my repeat. We have inside the ride a winner just like all of the episodes but this one's very special he's just won the championships the uk heat the red bull freestyle dj champions the mighty the mighty atom yes yes thank you sir thank you <laughs> yes. it's lovely to be here man thank you live and direct how are you feeling yeah i'm feeling good mate it's kind of a bit of a buzz yeah i have to i have to be honest i mean that sensation of kind of being validated by your peers and other mm. skillful DJs, past world champions saying, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> there is a pressure to that, isn't there? Yes. I think we all feel that pressure under peers. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And I was very kind of aware of that on the night because, you know, it was kind of a bit of a who's who of sort of London DJ scene on the night. There was a lot of faces, a lot of people, mm. um, you know, artists that I respect, such as yourself, you know, Blakey, uh, and other heads like that. So yeah, yeah. Switch was inside. You missed a Switch, yeah. yeah Big Switch. up Tony, very yeah, talented man. DJ. So yeah, that's that pressure of like, okay, people are watching. Yeah, I've got to come correct. All the gang, gang inside. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Do you find like there's an unload? You know, like when I don't know. You know, you feel like oh, I think I can rest easy a little bit now, knowing that I'm satisfied with not only the result but having to go through the whole process and you know the sleepless nights of waking up going, oh, I've got to press that button when I get into that piece of the set of shit. <laughs> that is exactly it. That is exactly it. Um, going through things which you've practiced a million times, but that night before, going, oh, what, what, what do I do at this point? Yeah. And suddenly just, yeah, and questioning everything. But yeah, that, that moment of release, I think as soon as the set was over, I was happy, basically. Regardless crazy. of the result, yeah. I can go and have a few beers now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's why I was on stage and I was kind of, 
half expecting to win, maybe not win, but I had like two beers in my hand. And I got told off by Red Bull because it wasn't like on brand because I had <laughs> two bottles of Peroni. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Red Bull's going Sorry, on, Kenny. Mate. Sorry, yeah. mate. <laughs> Big up, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> um, the blackouts. I think with any over um, excessive amount of revision, there comes that point where you're just like, you've almost like thought it through too much and then you start second guessing yourself, almost like you override your brain. Yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like you've taken in the same piece of information too many times to the point where it just becomes almost meaningless. Yeah, Your yeah. brain can't make sense of it anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really weird. What was it like being on um, on the podium at the time um, when it was your time to go on? You, you, I think you were like two yeah. DJs in, right? Yeah, that's correct. At what point were you just like, uh, I'm just going to have to meditate on this, just chill. It is what it is. I'm here. Think of everyone naked, that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly that. How did I, that feel? What was the... What was the what was the approach? What did it, how did it feel? I think exactly what you described there, this idea of just right, right, just focus on yourself, your breathing, try to block it all out. You know, inside you're absolutely terrified, but you smile and you <laughs> want to look like you're having fun because no one wants to see someone get up there, do their thing and look like absolutely terrified and mm. completely, uh, you know, like a robot. So, yeah, I, I really was just, just be in the moment. Um, yeah. And once you start, I think once you start, it's just a train and it just goes in a, in a second. You know, mm. The adrenaline's kicking in. Um, so, yeah. yeah, you know what? That is such a funny thing, isn't it? When when you're in that place in your head, and it's a thousand miles an hour, and it's like, and then you stop. It's almost like you just got off a roller coaster. You're like, oh, I could do that again now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. What absolutely. is up with that? It's I, such a funny DJ. Up thing. I isn't think it? it's hormones. I think it's adrenaline and and all the other things that our body and our brain is doing. Just yeah, the the perception of time is just mashed. Like, you know, it's mashed, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Um, with all those hours that you kind of put into uh, developing a set, talk me through that. Because as a as a fan, as much as a um, as a creative, I still can't get my head around the mathematics behind. I don't know what what draws the line between mathematics mm -hmm. on the decks and creativity. Oh wow, <coughs> deep question. Um, it's a deep one, isn't it? It is. I like that. I like that. You got me thinking. I think. Because there are a lot of mathematics to it because you're trying to present a lot of skills and a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. So you can almost look at it like a bit of a formula. Like, so I need to do some of this here. I need to do some of this. I need to showcase this skill set. I need to do this. So that could almost make it feel a bit uh, inorganic. Mm -hmm. So um, it is getting that balance between is this fun? And I think that's the fundamental difference with um, perhaps Red Bull um, to other other battles is that it is more about this idea of playing with music, as, as yeah. you said before. Yeah, you know, um, and fun. So what I did was I took a lot of material, which I've been doing, you know, in clubs before, stuff which I've done on mixtapes, stuff which has had uh, a good response and a good reaction. So it wasn't just stuff that I was like, well, if I put these two tunes together, people might like it. Mm -hmm. It was stuff that I knew was going to get a reaction, but it was just all condensed into a way, right? It's 15 minutes. How can I put the most possible music, skills, little tricks and stuff in a way that's cohesive and makes sense? That's crazy. Because uh, mu there must be moments within the set where you're just like, okay, come on, whatever, whatever. But then when you know there's something coming that you know pretty well, you're just like, oh, this is plain sailing now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you probably have it as well when you're performing. And there's certain bits where you're like, I've done this a million times. Like, this is my comfort zone. I'm in the pocket exactly. with this. Exactly. And then there's them bits where it's like, I've tried to be super technical here and there's a danger that it might go. <clears throat> so. That's the risky <laughs> bit. That's the, yeah. the tightrope we walk. Yes, it? absolutely. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's beautiful. Was there um, was there any th particular moments where you were just like, uh, this has gone too far on a technical or like, uh, maybe I'm, maybe I've bitten off a little bit more. Yes, yeah, I think because um, I didn't have a huge amount of time because they only announced the fact they were going to do a UK final like a month before. Right. So usually with let's say someone like DMC or something like that, you'd be you know the date in advance and you'd be building up to that you'd have at least six months let's say just working on that working on it so it kind of had to all come together and there was a point at which it was like whatever i have now i have to go with because i need to just practice this and lock this in yeah, yeah yeah and so in retrospect i think the the intro that i did is something which is is on a video which i submitted which is like this kind of house of pain thing with and i'm doing some pads and stuff yeah, yeah. and that's probably like the hardest thing to do and i remember on the day just thinking why the f did I choose to do the hardest possible <laughs> thing because you usually you would do something nice and easy to just you yeah. know bring bring you into it and give you a sense of confidence so that kind of I didn't you know that wasn't the tightest so from that point I was kind of like oh shit I need to really focus on what I'm doing and just sort of center myself um 
and then you get into those bits which you are confident with and you're like, oh, actually, I can start having fun again now. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that would just... I mean, I'm not DJ, but, <laughs> but that would... Well, I am a DJ, but I'm not that DJ. Like, do you, as a DJ, you are bona fide mother, motherfuckers. Go! Thank you, man. Like, for real. Um, how much of that technological influence uh, plays... Like, do you... Do you work ahead when you when you hear of a bit of technology coming along and you're like oh shit Ooh. that means i can do da, da 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 how often do you think that when do you, do you gravitate to technology so quickly yeah i would say so i would say For so real? yeah so with my setup uh on the night and the setup that i use when i'm djing i've got like sort of pads and and, and other controllers and all the other djs and even the, the tech guys when we're setting up they're like shit you've got a lot of stuff man like why have you got all this because it enables you to do more than just play two records mm. so i've got this kind of functionality within the software where i've got my two decks but i've also got two what they call remix decks so they're basically like two samplers so there are points at which i'm playing like a tune within mm. the internal sampler and then juggling vocals over the top of it so it's something you wouldn't have been able to do with just two decks wow Hold on. So, well, the sam okay, this sampler. Mm -hmm. Are these are these loop based samples that you're? So you could you could do live looping as well, and <coughs> some people do. So it's, it's so within the software. Yeah. You've got your two turntables, and that's like two players here, yeah. and then you've got kind of two what they call remix decks underneath, and so you can load like X amount of samples into there. So again, that's like well, I could have like another hundred samples in here. So what does that then enable me to do creatively that I couldn't just do playing two records? Wow, that's insane. How's that when you go into a regular club, you know? Um, I guess it depends on the circumstance. If I'm just going to go and play in like a bar or a party where people maybe don't want to necessarily hear all of that, then I'll just go and, you know, play yeah, some tunes and have I mean, fun. You know. and yeah. um, but a lot of the time it means you have to take your own equipment because you can't count on the club having all of that stuff. Is that a lot of baggage? Yes, yes. Physical and emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, let's talk about that, actually. I, uh, I'd like to get into that. So... You know, there's there's the there's a class system within DJing, isn't there? Mm. There's the vinyl guys with the bags. There's the USB sticks. Mm. There's the guys that like the CDJs and have the pre bag of like CDs. Mm. Then I mean, the, but these are all old school by comparison, like mm. what I saw the thing. But then this does come with a whole heap of like, you get to the club. What's the circumstances? Yes. How many people are in the booth? Yes. Is it a booth? Yes. Is there a sound man? Is this going to be a nightmare? At what point are you like, oh man, you know? Why don't I just use the USB sticks? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably like a, a <coughs> daily, a, a daily realization. Yeah, definitely. I think some clubs just aren't really set up to cater to performers who want to bring loads of stuff with them. Like yeah. you say, it's a booth. The mechanics of the booth might be so small, I can't physically maybe fit all of my stuff in alongside the turntables. Or there's yeah. some guy on before you yeah. who's and they're doing their thing, and you don't want to be there, you know jostling them out of the way so you can plug in yeah. all of your stuff. Because so. this is an argument, right, that I would throw out. Um, I know there's, there's, there's going to be people that are so anti-establishment on the idea, but when you think about it, like if Red Bull were to take on like club nights, mm -hmm. and, or rather, actually better still, were to own clubs mm. that literally facilitated to the, the quality of the DJ. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Or at least rooms. Yeah. Like the Red Bull room. And then it had totally, it's for the, on, the, the entrepreneur of the DJ and the, the, the critical listener of, yeah. of people who like that kind yes. of Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, please open that in London. <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> I mean, yeah, have a word with them. Um, I think you do f start to see some venues, I mean, they're kind of in the minority, but venues that do cater more for um, kind of the sound and the performer and the high end audio. I mean, you. I mean, you've seen it yourself. I'm sure you go to some clubs and the sound guys on it. On it, and, like and, a and, yeah. and the, the monitoring's amazing. The mm. mic's really nice and all of that kind of stuff. Um, this venue's like. Um, have you been to Spirit Land in Kings Cross? I know it's a completely different type of thing. What uh, else is that? So it's in the new Granary Square redevelopment. You know, yeah. they've, they've like sanitized it and made it yeah, yeah. very nice. I don't know, I don't know it's not the old King's Cross. It's right where Bagley's was. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. That those days are gone. It's very different. Um really? Yeah. I ain't been yeah. around yeah. yeah. It's very different. But um in there they it's all focused around DJs playing music off final and they have this like super high end hi fi and all of the turntables have like proper hi fi cartridges. So it's not the kind of place you would go and cut it up. But if you wanted to go and hear proper music played yeah. to like, you know, a really high level, you would go there. So oh, that's sick. The more, the more yeah. types of things like that, I think, um, but they're always going to be in the minority. You know, you, you, your average club is going to have a couple of CDJs, a surly sound guy, if that. Mm. And, you know, that mm -hmm. is what it is. Is that your mission brief, do you reckon, in terms of like uh, creative output? 
is is it just to give the best quality on the best spec and just push the the boundaries of of turntablism? Mm, yeah. Or is there a, a wider um, mission brief? Yeah, I guess it's an interesting <coughs> one. Um, I think I'm I'm quite pragmatic. You know, um, if I'm going to go and play in a bar play at a wedding whatever it is you know um mm. they all have their own attraction i'm quite happy to go and just play music and just be a dj so i i, I play um i play at a place called bounce in shoreditch which oh. is like a ping pong club mm-hmm. so one mm-hmm. old street so i go and play there and i've got a, a shout out to the guys there they're a really cool bunch and they let me play there on a thursday where i can go and i can play sort of disco re- re-edits and funk and stuff which is quite um, you know, not mainstream stuff. And when I go there, I'm more focused on playing music. Mm. But like you say, if I'm going to go and do a show, which is like my show and it's got my name on the flyer and I want to bring all my stuff and I want to be able to present um, a show that, that that's representative of everything that I'm doing. You mm-hmm. know? That's really <coughs> cool. Um, Reva, he's, he's autistic or... T- t- yeah, I'm, I can't remember what he said on the spectrum, but, mm. but his mission is he wants to... Uh, bring that out mm. into the public eye a little more mm. as to, you know, the benefits of and the achievements that can be created mm. and things like that. Mm. Um, hence why I asked that question, because um, I think when you've got like, even if it's like the smallest mission brief, it's mm. like almost, uh, it becomes a selfless thing, doesn't it? As a creative, yeah. Um, you know, whether it's like to, to be a bigger part of the organism of turntablism mm. or do we you know f- refine your own sound so mm. it gives people a more broader palette of I music you yeah know? that's an interesting idea i guess there is a certain element of that like what can i contribute and if i can in any way inject any fun and character into it maybe that might i don't know um inspire some people um or just present a different, yeah, a different approach mm. to it, definitely. But it's interesting what you're saying about Liam. I mean, shout out to Liam. Yeah, Reva. Shout out to Reva, yeah. Lovely guy. And this idea of <coughs> um, creativity, um, people who are on the spectrum, and could you argue that a lot of creatives might be on the spectrum to some level, mm-hmm. um, the way that the mind works to see things from a completely different perspective uh, yeah, to yeah. make people creative. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, man. I think with turntable, turntable is like... There's a habitual thing to it. Mm. It's like, well, more so back in the day. I mean, big shout out to DMC as well. Mm. Um, DMC family, you know. Yeah, shout the, out. With the minimalist of uh, equipment, you know, what can you make within yes. the confines yes. of that? Yes, yes. So that had like people just like, comp- that, mm. you know, became their isolated thing, mm. isn't it? Mm. There's something about that, I think, mm. with artists as well. Mm. What can you create with the minimalist of yes. Yes. Stuff. And um, what's the type of mindset of someone who would dedicate their life in that way to just spending hours, untold hours, just focusing on like two records? So true. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I guess it's horses for courses. That's why it's great. We've got DJs who are just more about the experience, you know, big kind of larger than life characters. But then also you've got people who are super studious and almost kind of, yeah, academics of, of, of what's possible. Yeah. Same with the beatbox scene. Mm. I mean, they, it runs very much hand in hand with the... Yes, there's a lot of parallels between... Because they're both such extreme types of noise. They're perhaps not for everyone. And you have to perhaps have a level of understanding to really appreciate it. And then once your eyes are open to it, then you're like, okay, he's dope because he can do this and I can understand what he's doing. So true. Like, there's a jazz form to the way... Mm. It's created and received. Yes, yes. Same with DJ. Yeah, people, people. I know use that term a lot, and it almost is a bit cliche. But I think that's the the best parallel that I can draw is that jazz thing, the way that things are kind of, um, it's very unconventional, and the approach to music and 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 the kind of freestyle element to it, which um, runs kind of counter to a lot of like established music theory. Mm. It's like you get up and you just fuck it up. You know, you're, not, you're doing stuff you're not supposed to do, but yeah, you yeah. make something sound beautiful. By yeah. playing chords, perhaps you're not supposed to do, or making noises with your mouth and, and yeah. doing a combination of crazy bass with your throat or whatever. You know, this isn't stuff that yeah. is traditional music sort of theory. It's punk in itself. Yes, yeah. It's like, yeah. burn it, destroy it, yes. make something new. Yeah, yeah. We're not supposed to be doing this. We don't care. We're just going to do it anyway. Rock star DJs. <laughs> yeah, man. I love that analogy. That's so fucking <laughs> cool. What um what did you grow up on? Like what what got you into it as a genre? 
Like turntablism. Yeah. I guess the introduction was, it was like Cuba. It was like mid to late 90s. That, that was like a renaissance period. You yeah. had all of the, the American guys on the West Coast, uh, Bay Area scene. Shortcut, Invisible Scratch Pickles, yeah. Master Michael, them guys, D-Styles. You had some amazing UK DJs. Obviously, Scratch Perverts is a name that's always going to come up in these kind of conversations. Um, kind of late 90s, early 2000s, they were smashing it. And they took it from doing battles to then actually, in a similar way, you know, bring it to a club and tearing yeah. it up and being creative with, with, with mad technology. Um, so it was that. But growing up in the UK, I started DJing, mixing, vinyl. It was drum and bass. It was jungle. Jungle, yeah. Yeah, 96. So DMV. that was like, that was, that's yeah. like the fucking golden era, man. Like I love the way, like, DMC, were, again, um, they they really embraced the, the DMC. I think C Craze brought drum mm -hmm. and bass to DMC. Yes. <coughs> Hard. Um, and there was a couple of other cats that, uh, that, that, that that went in that direction. Um, <clears throat> I love the fact that I love the fact that the DMC in that in that respect. Mm. I, I think with the the, the Red Bull freestyle, uh, it's almost like it's a it's stable for a certain mm. uh, category of DJing, and yes. I think D, DMC is another mm. category. It's it's like genres mm. of music in itself. Yes, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. couldn't imagine like. D and B popping off too much in a free, yeah. the freestyle. Yeah, it was interesting. I took a bit of a risk because I put some in at the end. Yeah, yeah, you cause did. Because I, I wanted to sort of represent like this is the music that I love that you grew up with. Yeah, yeah but I was conscious like this is this could flop really badly. You know, I'm not it's a whole like, different genre, yeah. uh, like generation of yes, which is yeah. really really cool. Yeah, kind of Red Bull sets are synonymous with like trap, mm. and he did like he or she did a word play with Drake or something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Which I think they themselves, the Red Bull guys, you know, shout out to to, to all those guys. They they keen to encourage a broad spectrum of creativity they don't want it to become because i think to some extent maybe that did happen a bit with dmc over time the the perception or definition of what a successful dmc set is is so narrow now that people can't maybe step outside of it like they did in the 90s people you know you watch the old sets people like dj noise or some mm. someone would just step up and do something really crazy and out of the box mm. where it's maybe less room for people to take those kind of risks creatively with it i think mm. potentially uh, i get you it's it's introvert it's introvertedness has eaten into itself slightly yeah i mean do you not see the same thing with beatboxing a bit over time from the point when you were doing it um when you first started coming out and like that kind of 90s thing coming off the back of i don't know the sort of some of the pioneers like razel or whatever to then the sort of 2000 onward era where it's young guys who are maybe just focused on the the technique as opposed to some of the stuff that you <coughs> where you had the broad kind of view of it um well, broader view comes from age. Yeah. You know, the older you get, the more you realise that some things are just repeated and repeated and repeated. But you can work that to your favour as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's some techers out there. I think I think it's um, that answers your question. I think it, people, you have to go to the extreme. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't always have to be. It, it's again, it's an organism. It's very much like. Like DJing, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Everyone has their place, like you know, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, they do. People do do go to that point though, where it does tend to eat into itself a little bit. It's kind of at what point is like? First of all, we was replicating instruments. Yes. But now we're replicating people replicating the instruments. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. is that about? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got quite extreme, and it's yeah. that whole punk thing again. Like some of the beatboxing where it's like incredibly technical, like the most complex kind of drum patterns. Yeah. And maybe that doesn't, that's wicked. You know, people need to do what they want to do and express themselves. But so case in point, right? Give me a case in point. I'm going to give you a visual case in point. Oh, we got visual case. If you're listening on iTunes, I will be uh, narrating this. Aha! This is the prime example right here. So <laughs> what we're looking at here, ladies and so gentlemen. This is Killer Keller. This is a single heavy artillery featuring amazing American rapper called Acrobatic. I believe Plus One that's did right. the cuts on yeah, it as well. Shout yeah, out Plus One. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So for you to take what you were doing, which is technical and trying to push the boundaries, but actually make it work on a record. Mm. I was listening to this the other day. This is a heavy piece of music. Thank you. And so I think that's, that's the difference. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I think people become so wrapped up in it. It's like, how do I present it in a way that's actually makes sense and people could might choose to listen to it. Yeah, home, absolutely. You know? How'd you break it down? Uh, it's also got the battle tools. Um, like, yeah. Well, yeah. Body I, was, parts. I was looking at it. I was thinking maybe I need to do a little something with this. Man. Yeah, dude, that's the first time I did the body parts. Like, this is sick. I got, I got them on splice now, but uh, yeah, that's... that. Was... you used to do... Was it on this one? 
or maybe it was another record, I think maybe it was your album, you had like asterisks, the tracks where it was like, this is one take, this is multi-track, because yeah, yeah, you totally, wanted to make yeah, the distinction, yeah. like this is where I'm doing all the yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. and this is where it's just like a that's creative right. multi-track approach, so big up. That that's, oh, big up, thank you. No, it, listen, that, that I still believe it falls in line with what I was just yeah. saying about the things you learn, the 10,000 hours with age, you realise that they could be re repeated again a little bit yeah. further down the road. Yeah. Um, one thing I love about which, um, which because of technology, I wouldn't have been able to have done back in the day. And that is do the whole one take mm. performance on a record. Mm -hmm. Now, you could argue the toss that, oh, yeah, you could have. You could have just stood on a mic and done the whole thing. like in Yes. A, yes. But I, I, I don't think there was enough of an audience there yeah. back in the day. It wasn't as commercialized mm -hmm. that it enables you to do that mm -hmm. like you can do it now. And also technology, man, like you can throw that shit into Ableton and you tweak every single little sound and detail, even though it was done one take. Yeah. Yep. You can make that thing sound like a, and I don't mean like, I mean, sonically, you can make it sound like it would fit in with any song yes, of yeah, the day. Yeah. Or with one mic. The multi-track thing can be a bit of a rabbit hole though, can't it? Can be. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe if I just made it, <coughs> I spent six months <coughs> tweaking the EQ on this kick drum or... Yeah, yeah, and um, I remember those mixtapes. Like, there was a couple of like DJ mixtapes where I just could. Like, do you remember like Vadim? He did that jazz fudge mixtape. Yes, yes, yes. That thing was incredible. Yes, yes. I remember one he did with Prime Cuts. That's as well. it. That yeah, was the yeah, that's one. the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was heavy, ridiculous. Now like, the yeah. layering and the yes, the, yeah, yeah. It was almost like. It felt seamless. Yeah, but you knew how much was going on within yes, that. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it becomes a different creature in itself because it's not a one take performance so you have to kind of view it for a different critical lens yeah. but, but i mean the mixtape game that's almost like an art in itself you were talking about dmc is one thing red bulls maybe something slightly different yeah. there there are mixtape djs who have just kind of built their name solely off that mm. um so i i've done a lot of that so i've done mixes for uh quite a few mixes for ninja tune solid steel podcast and that's like this kind of very iconic kind of brand for me that's some bad <laughs> yeah you yeah. done that yeah so i Killed did um, you have to check that out online guys yeah Jeez. definitely definitely um i did one mix which a lot of people responded to which was uh i did a mix for dj shadow introducing's 20th anniversary <gasps> and i took all of the samples he used in pretty much the order that he used them and kind of recreated the album but actually like played the songs and did creative stuff with it and so that was very much going down that rabbit hole of like multi-track i spent like six months working on that you got, the, you got all the samples for that? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of a uh, lot of searching. To be fair, the internet did help. I don't, yeah. I don't own them all on vinyl, but <laughs> I own a lot of them. But yeah, has he heard it? He must have heard it. I, th I think he. Um, I was hoping that he was gonna, you know, holler at you. Yeah, but um, yeah, he's a busy man. Uh, he's got better things to do. But he, I think he like liked the tweet when I mentioned it. That was enough for me. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> Damn boy, you remixed the fuck, dude. That's sick. That's crazy. Wow. I need to check that out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's a seminal album. Yes, that is. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's number one. We always just used to call it number one. We used to just sit around, smoke weed, like listen to that all the time. Dude, that's right. the one. <coughs> there was a there was a moment. I, I want to circle back around you your um, growing up period with those influences of Scratch Perverts, mm. Pickles, and mm. um, the Allies. Oh. Yeah. Do you remember that? Al right, so listen, uh, guys, we're going tech here, okay? So that if you, um, I'm going to say this now, right? DMC uh, World Finals, New York, 1999, um, uh, Craze, A Track, and was Infamous. It Infamous, yeah. Infamous. Infamous. It was just the yeah. three of them, wasn't it? But there was like four, or five of them. Wasn't yeah, it? so they did because they won it when they did it with the perverts. They did they when they won it themselves in yeah when they entered. Did they did did, did perverts beat them in '99? Yeah, remember. it did. I think so. And yeah. Although I was like. Part part of the perverts at the time. Yes. Uh, I had to, when I watched the video back <laughs> on, the, on on the allies set, I was like, oh no 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 no, this is they were onto something so new. Yeah yeah, I mean the levels at that point that was kind of almost like a peak, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. sort of ninety nine in terms of like technique and mad focus. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, that allies album they did D Day that was crazy. Yeah, another example of like yeah. Just pushing boundaries, yeah. and I think that the thing that's going on right now is like the technology that is being harnessed and that's coming through so through the gates. Yeah, it's like jump on the fucking train because if you're not, you're gonna get left behind. Yeah, do what they were doing. 
do it three times as harder, five mm. times as quicker. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yes, like, yes. like literally, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The evolution's crazy and technology just speeds that up and makes things possible that just weren't mm. even conceivable. I mean, if you think about when we were DJing with vinyl, the idea that, no, you can have all the music on a computer and you can edit stuff and you can also have sample yeah. decks playing at the same time and you can yeah. have untold amounts of effects and stuff and, um, yeah, what that does to your, like, creative sort of palette. You don't even need a team no more. Yeah. The well, team is the qu equipment. This is very true. This is very true. So when we first started doing um, like disabled shows, the idea that we had like three, four, five decks, it was like, oh, we can go from one tune straight into another. Now it's like, well, I can do some preparation to make it possible for me to do that just myself. Yeah. And I think that approach actually comes out in the way like I structured that set. This idea that, yeah, I want to just play four bars of a tune then go straight into another one, then have two tunes mixing and have like acapellas or samples on the sample decks, you know, and that's something we would have done. It would have taken three people to do mm -hmm. back in like even sort of, you know, 2004. Wow, yeah. Times is changing. Yes. Get on that, get on that uh, ship before it leaves the port. <laughs> leave that. And the, the running commentary on all of the podcasts I've done within the trilogy here is um, uh, this phase, uh, yes. needleless yes. business. Yeah. Um, and I said it the other day to, to, to revert. I was like, it just seems a bit obvious. You know, like, There'll come a time when we won't need knives and forks, right? And we'll yeah. be like, why do we even use knives yeah. and forks yeah. before anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I know that sounds stupid as an analogy, but it's true. Yeah. Because we've become so accustomed to certain things like a needle yes. and yeah. an arm. Yeah. But now this thing is happening. It's, I just think it's going to be so second yeah. nature. Yeah. No, but you're completely right. Because the idea of like having a stylus, this is because we had to have that to, you know, to, to track the groove and pick up the vibrations and turn that into sound. Mm. But like, you're completely right. Actually, when you think about it from a logical perspective, why would you need that anymore? <laughs> if you've got something that can cut out that, and that's kind of uh, like a weak link in any setup. Mm. So if you go to a noisy club, the feedback can affect how the serato or the tractor calibrates. So mm. it makes perfect sense. So things need to progress. We no, need, we no longer need to rely on the knife and fork in this mm. case. You know what I mean? And also fonts closing, like the, all, mm. all the old school things. I saw like a bunch of DJs like going for them needles. Yes. You know, they've backed yeah. up and got them all yeah. in covers and they're already being used up. Yes. They're, yeah. they're all closing down those covers. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. The whole thing with the, the shore like that kind of classic turntablist uh, cartridge when they announced they were going to discontinue them, everyone just went crazy. It yeah. started like stockpiling them. People buying like hundreds of pairs of needles and stuff. I bought quite a few myself because yeah. I was getting worried. But um, <laughs> yeah, phase, phase is going to be a game changer. It'd be interesting <coughs> to see what it's like in the flesh. A lot of people have had a chance to try it and they're saying, yep, yeah, it works. It's good. For real. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing, I'm hearing good, good vibes. Mm, yes, yes. Maybe if FaZe would be kind enough to send me a set, then maybe I could... Uh... <laughs> oh, what, you, oh, you mean sending a, a couple of free samples to the UK uh, Red Bull champion? Something like that. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that within the mission. Yeah. I, was just, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you know, let's put it out there and see what happens, isn't it? Anyway, look, we've got a Saturday to take care of. Yes, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleague, the man, the now legend, uh, first place... Red Bull Freestyle DJ Champion. The Mighty Atom. Big up. Cheers for coming Thank down, you, brother. Sir, man. Thank you. Killer Keller Podcast. Stay locked, stay loaded. Yeah, next time. Subscribe as well, all right? Peace. Peace.